So Daniel Jones got paid four years, $160 million. That's $40 million a year. That's New York's problem, dude. If he doesn't work out, it can be voided after two years, I read, which is great for New York. But I'm going to tell you guys right now what I'm scared of because this is going to happen from now on. Every quarterback who negotiates a contract is going to say they want at least $40 million because if Danny gets it, then so can they. The market is torched. It is absolutely torched. I mean, guys, look at this comparison. Danny's last three seasons, Tyrod Taylor's first three seasons with the Bills. What did you pay him that much for? Like, I just, it's, um, let's just get on with the video. Anyway, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and happy Wednesday. Today's video, I'm going to continue to honor fan requests by giving you guys a list of my top 15 NFL defensive players in the league right now. However, I want you guys to understand that I am doing this as if I was drafting a team tomorrow. So I am heavily factoring in age like I always usually do. Basically, uh, you're not going to see Aaron Donald and I don't want to hear anything about it. Couple quick things before we hop into the video. One, head over to gfuel.com, use code Wyatt's World, save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products. And two, if you're 18 years or older, head over to Prize Picks, the daily fantasy app where code Wyatt's World will match up to $100 of your first deposit. But remember, always play responsibly, and let's get into my top 15 NFL defensive players if I was building a team tomorrow. Alright, let's just dig right into this bad boy. Number 15, I got Chris Jones from the Kansas City Chiefs. Dude, this guy has been one of the most explosive, disruptive defensive tackles in football over the last five, six seasons. It is a little bit unfortunate that before this year, he was missing time consistently every year, but this year he bounced back healthy and he ended with what, 15 and a half sacks? This guy's 28 years old, he's been to the Pro Bowl four times, he's an All-Pro and he's won two Super Bowl rings. Now I understand your team has one of the best offenses ever, but at the same time, he is the reason their defense defense is able to hold their own half the games. He deserves a big contract. He's definitely going to get one. And I would take Chris Jones at number 15. All right, number 14, give me Jalen Ramsey. I nearly had AJ Terrell on the list over Jalen, but I couldn't do it yet. Jalen Ramsey is still actually really good. A lot of people wrote him off this year, even though his team was just shit. And another thing about Jalen Ramsey is he's been around a long time, but the guy's still only 28 years old. He's got three, four years of his prime left in him. And if he's anything like Darius Slay, he's got another five. I mean, Jalen's a pest. He's a pest. He's always been a pest and he's been one of the biggest pests in the game. Great in coverage. He's got great hands. He can tackle. The guy's a super Super Bowl champion. He's a four-time All-Pro, I think. Maybe it's only three. Either way, I still think Jalen Ramsey is one of the top corners in the game, and if I was drafting a team tomorrow, he'd be probably one of the top 14 guys I take. All right, next on the list at number 13 is Joey Bosa. Do not yell at me. I know how good this guy is. He's an absolute beast, but he missed essentially the whole year. And in the year that he missed, I got to see a lot of other young and upcoming ballers play a lot more than him. And it just, it, it's changed my mind to make me think that maybe I would rather have some of these guys over Joey at the moment. As far as an elite defensive end goes, though, I mean, as long as he's healthy, you're not going to find a lot of guys better than Joey Bosa. He has been an absolute superstar since he was drafted. I mean, we're talking about a guy here who is the defensive rookie of the year. We're talking about a guy that if he doesn't miss three, four games, he's guaranteeing you 10 sacks a season. We're talking about a guy that the quarterback is laying a brick in their pants as they're looking over the line because they know that they have a fraction of a second to get that ball out of their hand or they are going to meet the undertaker. And this guy can wreck an entire offensive line. I can't say it enough. This is not a knock on Joey Bosa. It's simply just he missed time and I got to see others play and that's why he's as low as he is. But I love him. All right, next up, we got number 12. It's Mad Max Crosby. I'll take him. Talked about this guy yesterday. Just an absolute animal of an edge rusher, man. Hasn't missed a game in two seasons. This year, he had 12 and a half sacks and forced four fumbles. Can you imagine how much more recognition he would be getting if the Raiders weren't terrible? Like, he would be probably recognized as a top five defensive player in the game. I like Max a lot, man. He's just, he's quick. He's powerful. He can get through about anybody. If you're going to draft somebody who's going to be up on your line and they're going to be consistently healthy and doing a consistent good job the entire time, Max Crosby is going to be one of the best options available right now. All right, moving on to number 11, we've got Quinn and Williams. I don't know what's there not to like about him. He's 6'3", 300 pounds, and he runs around like he's Ishiro. 
a freak of nature for the size of him. And every year since he's come in the league, which has only been four, he has done better, 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 and better. This year he played 16 games, had 12 sacks, two forced fumbles. He also had 55 tackles and hit the quarterback 28 times. I mean, this guy, if you go in a dictionary and you look up the word pressure, his picture is gonna be under it. For how young and how new and how ripe this guy is into the NFL yet and how good he has been looking and improving, I would guess in three years this is gonna be his league. That'll bring us to number 10. Give me Hassan Reddick. Talk about underrated. Holy shit. This guy's made one Pro Bowl and it wasn't until this year and he has been so good. 2020 with the Arizona Cardinals, he had 12 and a half sacks. Last year with the Panthers, he had 11 sacks. This year with the Super Bowl contending Eagles, they didn't win. He had 16 sacks, forced five fumbles and recovered three of those. He also played in every single game and had 49 tackles. This guy's been a beast for the last couple years he was an animal this year he was an absolute dog in the playoffs this year people don't want to give him credit i will hassan reddick i would take at number 10 he's one of the best linebackers in football all right, now we're on to number nine. Give me Pat Sertan. Talk about pests, he is another one. You don't really come by elite good corners like this at this stage in their career. Like, he is playing like a veteran. He doesn't play like a guy who's only been here for two years. Hard to get separation on him. The guy sticks on you like glue, and if the quarterback throws the ball within 10 feet of him, he's gonna make you pay the price. I just think out of the two years he's been in the league as a young and upcoming cornerback, he is showing more and more promise with every game he plays. And I would like to say, Jair Alexander had a good fight with him to make this list, but I think I would take Pat over Jair. I think Denver's got something really special with Mr. Sertan and under Sean Payton, I'm expecting him to honestly look even better and that's gonna be really hard to do. All right, coming in at number eight, I'll take Derwin James. So fast, so good at recognizing plays, and he can hit so damn hard. This is a guy that if he's playing, he's gonna get you at least 100 combined tackles a season. He's a guy that could be on the opposite side of a field and see a screen pass on the other side, and he will be over there in less than two seconds because he's that quick, that good at snapping onto what's happening. Can you imagine this year if Derwin hadn't been there, their defense would have been murdered. Now again, unfortunately, Derwin James does miss time statistically every single year, but one or two games, that's not that bad. Especially after how I thought his career was going after 2019 and 2020, where he played a total of five games in two seasons. But he bounced back. He's been in relatively good health, and he has been the superstar that he entered the league as when he was an All-Pro. I'm comfortable with the tag. Give me Derwin James at number eight. All right, up next at number seven, I understand this one might be controversial, but give me Darius Leonard or Shaq Leonard. Guys, I'm gonna level with you. If he's healthy, I'm taking him over Fred. If he's healthy, he's a top five, top four player in the whole league. Darius Leonard can do it everything. He is a complete package. He can tackle, he can get to the quarterback, he can intercept, he can force a fumble. Hell, he's notorious at that. You're not going to find somebody in the NFL who is able to do everything at the level he can do unless his name is Micah Parsons. But it's the unfortunate reality that if you play one game a year, I can't credit you like you played all 17. I know how good he is. I'll never give up on him and I can't wait till he's back next year with full steam. All right, and on to number six, give me Fred. After pretty much just describing everything he is in Darius Leonard, I mean, we're pretty much talking about the same person except a personal preference. Like I said, if they're both healthy, I'm taking Shaq, but Fred is not the wrong answer. Fred is basically a better version of prime Eric Kendricks. Like he is just, he is a field general. He's a run stopper. He's a guy that is, he's staring the quarterback in the eyes to figure out what the play is before it even happens. He's a very, very high IQ smart linebacker. And that's what I appreciate so much about. Him. Also, Fred is always going to have one thing up on Shaq Leonard. Fred is always going to have one thing up on majority of the people in this league, and it's so damn important. It's called health. Fred hasn't missed a game in five, six years. He's been in the league, what, since 2018? Never missed a game. Fred Warner, freshly just turned 26, might not even honestly be in his prime yet. I'll take him at number six. All right, now we're on to number five. Give me Sauce Gardner. Absolutely. Fucking lootly. Oh, Wyatt, he's only played one year. Pro Bowl, All Pro, Rookie of the Year. The only other thing he could have done this year was win the MVP or a Super Bowl. Like, I mean, what? In coverage, he, he is the best in the league right now. And it might be premature to say that, but he nobody locked anybody up like he did this year. And just another little insight as to how good of a playmaker Sauce is. He had 20 passes deflected this year. After one year in the season, 20. Jalen Ramsey has never hit that. Darrell Revis only did once. I know that's not a huge key component stat but it is a good shining light to see what kind of guy he is i mean he is always trying to make shit happen sauce is great and i would take him at number five 
All right, coming in at number four, we've got Miles Garrett. And don't take this as an insult. It's a compliment. There's just three guys in the league I would slightly take above Miles. He's the same player he always has been, an absolute beast, a wrecking ball. 16 sacks this year, 16 sacks last year. 12 before that, I think 10 before that, 13 before that. Like, it, it doesn't stop. I mean, this guy is such a wrecking ball. Opposing teams need to have a game plan just to stop him in order for their offense to properly function. No disrespect to the guy, nothing but love. Miles Garrett, I'd take you at number four. That brings us to number three, give me Nick Bosa. This guy can be argued as not only the best defensive player in football, he can probably be argued as the best player. Like, he is that good. 18 and a half sacks this year, 15 and a half last year, nine his rookie season. Not to mention, he's also been to the Pro Bowl a couple times at All-Pro once. He won Rookie of the Year. He won Defensive Player of the Year. Like, there is something really, really special brewing up with this guy. And honestly, I wouldn't blame you if you picked him at number one. All right, number two, give me TJ Watt. Personal preference, that's that's all I have to say. There's nothing negative to say about TJ Watt. He is the Lawrence Taylor of this generation to a lot of people. When healthy, he's gonna get you anywhere between 14 and 23 sacks, apparently. Gonna force between five and eight fumbles a season. He's gonna be an all-pro. He's gonna go to the Pro Bowl. He's probably gonna be defensive player of the year. Like, I mean, there's no knocks. There's nothing. I can sit here and talk good about him all day. You guys are gonna get bored of it, though. The guy is so clearly different than the rest of the league. He is so clearly above the rest of the league. And I would take him at number two, but my number one guy isn't him. Because number one on my list, if I could take any defensive player in this league, it is undisputedly, undeniably, not even questioned, Micah Parsons. There is nobody in this league who can play at every position on defense as good as Shaq besides one man, and it's Micah Parsons. This is a linebacker who's going to get you 13 sacks a season. This is a linebacker who can step back and play corner for a play if you need him to. This is a linebacker who hasn't missed a single game in two years, and in those two years, he's been a two-time All-Pro, a defensive rookie of the year, and made the Pro Bowl both times. I understand the Pro Bowl is kind of a joke now, but it's still an accolade to recognize, you know, those who are above the rest of the league. And Micah Parsons, to me, is sitting on top. This guy could not have done any more if he tried to in his first two seasons. He is everything to that defense. He is everything to that team. He is everything to that organization. And if I was building a team tomorrow, give me Micah Parsons number one overall when I'm picking on the defense. All right, guys, and that is going to be it for my top 15 NFL defensive players. I hope you guys enjoyed this list. If you disagree, make sure to let me know in the comments. It's always fun reading those. Anyway, you already know the drill. I'm going to hop off and get this edited so you guys can watch it on time. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, I will see you in the next video.